Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of Bolivia. Bolivia is located in somewhat the center-ish of South America and as you can see it is landlocked. We'll talk about why in its history but it borders Peru over here. It has a very long border up here with Brazil. There's a border here with Paraguay, Argentina, and Chile up there. Um, as you can see, Bolivia is very dominated by two different geographic regions. So let's talk about this one first. Um, this section is part of the Andes mountain range very large, I think it's the world's longest mountain range that goes all over the west coast of South America. Um, there's lots of really important geographic areas in this part of Bolivia. Let's start up here with Lake Titicaca, um, which is obviously the largest lake in Bolivia. It's um, very important to its ancient history and um, just the, the culture of Bolivia in general. We'll talk a little bit about it in its history, but um, I've already covered Peru in my country series, so I talked a lot about Lake Titicaca and the Incas and what have you during that, so you can always check that out too. Um, right here you can see the capital city of La Paz, but if you've looked carefully at this map, you see another red dot here at Sucre. So Sucre was the original capital, when Bolivia was first formed. Um, the official capital was eventually moved to La Paz, but the judicial section of the government of Bolivia is still in Sucre, whereas the legislative and executive branches of government are in La Paz. Um, these are the two like biggest cities in Bolivia, also Cochabamba, and Oruro in this region. Um, Potosi is going to be important in history. We'll come back to that. Um, but most of these areas lie in a region known as the Altiplano. So the Andes mountain range kind of splits into two forks, right about here, and then another way over here. So this whole middle region is a lot lower. It's still very high, don't get me wrong, but much lower than the rest of the Andes Mountains. Um, the highest point of Bolivia is right here. It is Mount Sahama. Just a side note. But yeah, the Altiplano is where we get most of the agriculture and farming regions of Bolivia. Um, not too much because this is very, very high up. Very extreme elevation. La Paz is the highest capital city in the world. Um, so not too much agriculture, but nonetheless, lots of cattle as well. Um, right here, very interestingly, you see this part is white. This is the Salar de Uyuni Salt Pan, or Salt Plain, I think. It's the world's largest salt pan in the world. And it's pretty amazing. There's pictures in here of it. Um, but it's a very remarkable place, just salt as far as the eye can see, very, very flat. Uh, when it rains, there's just a layer of water on top of it. It's extremely reflective. It's so beautiful. Such a remarkable place in the world. Um, moving out over here, this area over here is known as the Yungas. It's um, really beautiful. Um, apparently, this is where like the more touristy, um, like, what's it called? Ecotourism is in that area of Bolivia. But all of this you can see out here, very, very green, lots of rivers. And that's because, as we know right here is Brazil, we've got the whole Amazon stretching into this region. Very extremely forested and wet and rainy. And it's because of these mountains here that this rain doesn't reach this area. So we get all kinds of, um, you know, dry spaces. The Atacama Desert starts right about down here, which is the driest place in the world. If you're wondering just how dry we're talking. We have the city of Santa Cruz over here as well. Another very big major population center. Um, but 
yeah, it's a really remarkable place. I should also mention um, one other mountain that's important is Mount Ilimani, which is just outside of La Paz. It makes La Paz even more picturesque because there's this giant snow-capped mountain just dominating the skyline. It's really pretty. Um, but I think that's all I wanted to touch on for geography. If I remember any more, I'll just hop in and say it. But let's get into its history. We're going to start over here at Lake Titicaca. The earliest-ish known um, indigenous peoples to live in Bolivia were the Amara. They are still here. They are the, actually, the, I believe they're the dominant um, population. I know that Bolivia is predominantly indigenous, but I think they're the biggest of the indigenous people. Or the most populous, you know what I mean. Anyway, so they came to the area and established um, the city of Tiwanaku. And they basically became like the Tiwanaku culture. Um, their main city was built on the lake here uh, by 1500 BCE. By about the year 400, they started to expand out in the region. Um, and they did so non-violently. They did so by contacting other cultures and assimilating with them and establishing trade. Um, very clever. So they really started to spread out. Um, but by the year 950 CE, climate change happened to this area. Um, less rain started to fall, as we talked about in its geography. And by the year 1000, the Tiwanaku culture had disappeared. And then from 1438 to 1527, the Incan Empire dominated this region. I did a whole video on um, Machu Picchu, their city up here by Cusco in Peru. And I did a whole video on their mythology. Really interesting. Um, but they were squashed by the Spanish pretty badly. Um, by 1533, the Spanish had conquered what is now Bolivia. They called the region Charcas. And it was just kind of, you know, a regular mining place until in Potosi when silver was discovered. And it wasn't just like, hey, I found a little bit of silver. It's, wow, there is like a ton, 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 ton of silver here. So um, the city exploded in a silver boom, huge silver mines. It made Spain buckets of money. They became ultra rich off of this region over here. And they mined all this silver from um, slaves, of course. The conditions that the slaves lived in were really, really awful. And these slaves were the indigenous people of the area as well, eventually, um, African slaves were brought over, but I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe not so much as in other parts of South America, especially up in the north, but anyway. Um, so yeah, the, the slave condition was really awful, and we'll get into it in the relaxation channel. There was one huge uprising in 1781, where the city of La Paz was destroyed. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit in this book when I flip through it for you. Um, but the Spanish domination didn't begin to end until the 1800s. Napoleon invaded Spain. Um, that kind of throws a wrench in all of their colonies. On May 25th, 1809, the Chuquisaca Revolution began, and that sparked not just the battle for independence in Bolivia, but pretty much independence all throughout South America. They fought a long, bloody war against the Spanish coming from Rio de la Plata, what's now Argentina. They were led by Antonio José de Sucre, as well as Simón Bolívar, and eventually independence was won on August 6, 1825, and the name Bolivia comes from Simón Bolívar. Um, it was a little rocky after independence. In 1836, they invaded Peru try to create like one big nation. Um, Chile wound up declaring war on them because of, mainly because of the lines being drawn over um, which brand new country could have which resources in what areas and it became very convoluted. Um, basically, all these surrounding countries at some point declared war on Bolivia to some extent and they really beat up Bolivia. Um, 
After the war with Chile and Peru broke apart from Bolivia, Peru declared war in 1841. Um, the War of the Pacific occurred from 1879 to 1883. This is when Chile took over a whole department over here, and Bolivia lost its coastline. Um, from 1932 to 35 was the Chaco War with Paraguay, where they lost this chunk of their land. And yeah, all of these weird lines you see are all from wars. Um, the War of the Pacific. Oh, I mentioned that, didn't I? Anyway, lots of wars and battles with the surrounding nations, uh, which made Bolivia shrink and shrink into the size that it is today. Um, the Chaco War was the big spark for um, change, like something had to be done about this. So in 1952, there was a huge revolution. It installed President Victor Paz Estensoro sorry, into power, um, but... After that, from about 1964, from about, from 1964 to about 1993, there were various military juntas and weak governments that were eventually overthrown. It's a lot to get into. The, the most important one was when the CIA got involved. There, there is oil in Bolivia, so the CIA got involved in the government. Um, they installed Hugo Banzer Suarez in 1971 to be more politically aligned with the U.S. Um, the CIA launched Operation Condor where they kidnapped and killed one of the previous presidents, Juan Jose Torres, in 1976. Che Guevara was assassinated by the CIA in Bolivia. It was a whole to do. Um, but eventually in the 1990s, um, there was a big push for democracy and, um, the government decided to privatize a lot of the public sectors like the oil and the water electricity in exchange for investments from those companies um that led to water protests in the late 1990s early 2000s when the condition and quality of water was extremely poor um companies putting profits over people you know the the same just a side note here where i live in california the same thing's happening with our electricity it's owned by a private company and they're basically okay i'm trying not to get off too, too tangent but they're basically starting all these wildfires the city of paradise that burned down was started by them and no one likes them and they keep raising prices and electricity so you know no one wants them anymore um so i totally get the protests that were happening here there was also one over um oil it was quite a mess there's also a big crackdown on coca. So coca is a plant that's been grown in Bolivia for forever. Um, the Incan kings used to chew it. It was reserved only for them and like their priests and everything. But um, as time went on, it was given to, oh, you know what it was? It was the Spanish gave it to the workers in the mines to keep them energized. And eventually everyone in Bolivia would chew it, especially up here because it helps with elevation sickness um, but the leaves are also used to make cocaine so the government really cracked down on growing coca which the indigenous growers who've been growing it in their families for generations uh, were not pleased about this because it was very profitable for them and um, being forced not to grow it just to try to stop the drug trade um, really hurt their profits. Um, so all of this on top of each other, the protests and the, the coca crackdowns and all of that, among other governmental things, led to the election in 2005 of Evo Morales as president. Um, he's the first indigenous leader of Bolivia, and he was a coca farmer who got involved in politics because of the injustices he was facing as a farmer. Um, he really focused on nationalization of all the public sec sectors that had been privatized. Um, he really focused on indigenous rights, but even like changing, he changed the constitution to include more indigenous rights. He added a flag for indigenous rights. Um, he changed the name of the country to the plurinational state of Bolivia so that it was more inclusive of all the indigenous peoples. And, um... You know, he 
I was one of those people that was very, very popular at first, but I feel like as time went on, the power kind of got to him. Um, plus he was really into socialism, which I don't see anything wrong with, honestly, as a personal note, but, um, when it gets to the point when you're aligning yourself with dictators and it's, it's making you, you know, decide to run for a third election through a loophole and trying to do a fourth election through a loophole, um, kind of an issue that really came to a head in 2019. Um, you know, Morales had been fighting, fighting, fighting for another term as president and through election fraud, he declared himself the winner. Um, there are huge protests against this, which led to him resigning, set up a provisional government, um, elections for the new president were delayed because of the pandemic. So it's happening right at the start of 2020, but eventually, um, the newest president, Luis Arce, was inaugurated on November 8th, 2020. And that's basically where we are with Bolivia today. It's a brand new chapter in Bolivia. I mean, they've had the same president since 2005. So that's a big change for Bolivia. So we'll really see where they go from there. So in the meantime, let's flip through this book. Look at this cute face. How sweet. Let me show you some spectacular photographs from this absolutely beautiful country, Bolivia. So first of all, we're up high in the mountains with some llamas. Look at that view. Look at the clouds. Very, very beautiful. Here we have a political map of Bolivia. I like this because you can see the different nature reserves. And these are indigenous areas as well. This is Laguna Colorada, which is in that... Um, it's in this region um, where minerals mix in with the water in this very sparse, dry landscape, which creates all these interesting colors of the lakes. This is Sahama National Park, and there's the big peak, an extinct volcano, it says. This is also in the south, in that nature reserve I pointed out where the winds are so rough against this barren, sparse place that the rocks there get twisted in all these shapes after years and years and years and years of harsh wind. Here's a physical map of Bolivia. You can really see, let me get pencil. Um, these two mountain ranges here, Cordillera Occidental, Cordillera Oriental, and the Altiplano region in the middle. You can see the um, Oriente, I guess it's called here. I've seen it called a lot of different things. There's the Yungas, part of the Gran Chaco, most of which was lost to Paraguay during that war. But yeah, very beautiful. Look at this picture. This is in the Altiplano. You can see the big mountains in the background, but these lush green valleys with the water and alpacas. So here's the salt pan I told you about. Solar, Solar de Uyuni very gorgeous. So this is during the dry season, where it's all cracked and crunchy and hard. And then during the rainy season, it turns into this. So this is a person standing in the water. And it's called the world's largest mirror because it's super reflective. Looks amazing. Let's see. Oh, how gorgeous. Pozerna, Pozerna, uh, the river in the rainforest region. This is um, on Lake Titicaca, the reed boat there. And this is Manco Capac, who I talked about a lot in my mythology of the Incas. He was the first Incan king. So here's what I'm talking about. This is La Paz, and this is Mount Ilimani looming over the background. Isn't that beautiful? So, such a pretty place. This is in the Yungas range, and you can see these are clouds all throughout the forest. Uh, very sadly, a landslide, but that kind of happens when you live in that kind of environment. This is in Santa Cruz. This is San Lorenzo Cathedral. And this is in Cochabamba. It's like the main marketplace, I believe. Very Spanish style architecture. 
A sweet sloth. Look how precious. Look at three toes. One, two, three. Some beautiful macaws. And this is in the south in that dry desert region, all the cacti. A cougar. Or um, in California where I live, we say mountain lion. Or puma, really depending on where you're from, they're all the same. The national flowers, this is the cantuta. And this is the patuju. Patuhu? I'm not sure, but it's really interesting looking, isn't it? We've got the Andean condor. Um, I think it's one of the largest flying birds, or maybe the largest flying bird, I'm not positive, but um, very impressive, huge, huge bird that lives in the Andes. Here are some very sweet capybaras, the world's largest rodent, and just the cutest animal ever. <laughs> A great picture of this thick, thick jungle. The rainforest. A pencil catfish. Very tiny little fishy. And a big old anteater looking very sweet. And this is a Tiwanaku statue. Isn't that so cool? The little engravings. And this is cool. This rock, as you can see, it's like a big wall with people standing there. It used to be um, horizontal. Over time, it's become vertical. But these are all dinosaur footprints. Isn't that wild? My gosh. This is Machu Picchu in Peru, one of the major Incan cities. And this is a cool map of the different Amara kingdoms from the 14th century, it says, throughout the region, mainly focused, of course, around Lake Titicaca and all throughout the Altiplano. This is Francisco Pizarro, who led the Spanish to conquer the region. This is one of the beautiful Jesuit missions that are still standing in Bolivia. They built these missions to convert people and give them a place to work. Let's see. Cerro Rizzo in Potosi. It was, I think it was like the largest city in South America or even like the Americas during its height, I believe. It was a big, big boom. This is a chest that some of the silver from Potosí was sent back to Spain in. Pedro Domingo Murillo, who was an um, independence fighter, a rebel leader who was executed by the Spanish. Um, a cool map of independence victories throughout South America. So we can see Bolivia here in 1825 becoming independent from Spain. This is Tupac Katari. He led that rebellion I told you about against the Spanish where they ransacked La Paz. He's like a hero today, of course. Here is the result of the War of the Pacific. You can see this used to belong to Bolivia. It became part of Chile. This is during the Chaco War. And this is Victor Paz Estensoro. And this is one of the oil protests in 2003. So here's a magnificent looking man with the flag that Evo Morales helped create to represent the indigenous people of Bolivia. Here is the flag of Bolivia. It says the Bolivian flag consists of three horizontal stripes of red, yellow, and green. Red symbolizes the blood of Bolivia's brave soldiers Yellow is for Bolivia's wealth and resources, and green stands for fertility and the nation's natural beauty. When flown by the government of Bolivia, the flag includes the national coat of arms in the center. The coat of arms includes symbols of Bolivia, including a condor, Mount Potosi, and an alpaca. Can you see it? Right there. Let's see some presidential guard soldiers looking very official. This is in La Paz. It's the Chamber of Senators and Chamber of Deputies, it says. This is in Sucre. Sucre, sorry. Very old looking city, because it is. And then La Paz being more of a modern city. Here's a cool map of downtown La Paz. You can see that 
um, the main government sections over here, the Basilica Art Museum, Witches Market, all the cool places, Museum of Musical Instruments. Here's some people voting, and here is Evo Morales speaking during um, some kind of speech, I suppose, I'm not sure. This is um, Evo Morales' party, the MAS, or Movement Towards Socialism, so this is a big um, rally for that. The different departments of Bolivia. Oh wow, a cattle rancher. Llama crossing. How sweet. Here's an oil refinery in Cochabamba. And this is at a mine in Potosi, where silver is still being mined, along with tin. Um, that was a really big industry in the 1900s up until like the 1980s. You can see a resource map over here. The oil's down here. Gold up here. Silver, zinc for tin. And this is quinoa, a seed that grows in this region. Really, really delicious. And this is their money, the Boliviano. Okay. At a sugar factory. And this is just a really beautiful street. It looks very European, doesn't it? This is a really cool public transit in La Paz where instead of riding buses, you get to go over the city in your own little cable car. This is on Lake Titicaca. You can take ferries across. And here we see the most dangerous road in the world. This is in the Yungas. And it's called like the death road because there's no guardrails or anything and it's very, very narrow. A lovely lady in her traditional attire with her little baby population map. You can see pretty much most of the people live in this region right here. This is El Alto, which is the main suburb of La Paz. Making some food. It says they're Italian, um, Italian Bolivian, so they're making Italian food. A mask for an Amara festival. Making a basket out of woven reeds, very traditional craft. And here is a Chipaya home in the Altiplano. Here's a good map of a lot of the native peoples where they live in Bolivia. And these are Mennonites who also live in Bolivia. We call them like the Amish here, like the branch in America is known as the Amish. An incredible mask and costume for a festival. This is El Gran Poder, apparently. Praying at Mass. This is one of the Jesuit missions, isn't it? That architecture is so beautiful. They really put a lot of work into it. You can see that must be the church there. And this is in Copacabana, um, a very sacred place, a very sacred altar to the Virgin Mary. Some more people praying. This is a shaman. It looks like, I wonder if he's making an offering or something. He's got some candies there. And this is for the Day of the Dead. Um, they've got some bread they're probably offering. Fabulous attire. Women wear these little bowler hats with their cultural attire. It's so beautiful. A very prominent woman for woman for women's rights in Bolivia, Adela Zamudio, or she went by the name Soledad. She wrote poetry at a music festival, playing some very indigenous-looking instruments and indigenous-looking clothes, and not so indigenous. But this is Jaime Laredo, the composer or conductor. I mean, you know what I mean. The bombo, traditional drum playing some classical music, which is apparently a big to-do since it's what the colonizers brought over. Cecilio Guzman de Rojas, his art, very lovely. 
playing some soccer. Of course, soccer or football is like the biggest sport. And these boys here riding their bikes, they look like they're about to drop the hottest rap album of the year. A very lovely woman. Looks like she's having a very solemn moment. Some cute kids. How cute. Getting ready for school. <laughs> and this is the University of St. Francis Xavier in Sucre, the second oldest university in the Western Hemisphere, it says. This is a healer performing a ceremony. And these are a top game that they play. It's pretty much Beyblades, but more traditional, of course their traditional hats that they wear for the children to keep them warm. At a beautiful wedding, that must be the mother-in-law. Yeah, there's the groom and the bride. These are potatoes. So potatoes come from Peru. They come from this corner of the world. So there's all different varieties of potatoes. This looks delicious. Antichucos. Bunuelos, which is basically just like fried fried flour with cinnamon and sugar. And a fruit vendor with some baskets too, it looks like. And this is during Carnival in Oruro. Very, very colorful, of course, because it's Carnival. And that's the end of our book. So, thank you very much for watching. I'll have another video about Bolivia for you tomorrow when we flip through another book. So be sure to subscribe if you're still awake so you won't miss it. I hope you found this video very relaxing and educational and I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Good night.